Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everybody, now welcome back to our next uh, lecture. So it's uh, lecture 7 I am presenting uh, today. So this uh, yesterday, until yesterday what we have done, we have explained the hyperbolic equation is, uh, is a first we did a uh, linear convection equation and then uh, we use the naive approximation, central difference, so which has given us the oscillation that we have seen in the numerics and then uh, due to in order to avoid the the instabilities or oscillation in the solution we applied the idea of uh, upwinding method so it means upwinding means again to to remind you that we follow the information where it is coming from suppose we have uh, the pipe and if the velocity is going coming from the left to right, then if we are sitting at this point, we approximate the derivative from left side. So that is, we call it as a backward difference. So if the velocity is coming from right to the left, then we just approximate the derivative from the right side. So it means the point i and i plus one. So that we call it as a forward difference. So that is, so there we applied only the first order approximation. So then we are able to stabilize our numerical scheme. So, but still it is the first order scheme. So we may not expect the exact solution, but it is a little bit deviating from the exact solution. And uh, what uh, we have seen that once we increase our resolution, then we are very close to the exact solution. So we still, so we, we, we minimize the error while increasing the uh, resolution. And then we extend it to the viscose form. So once we added the viscosity, somehow our oscillation was going away. And uh, so the viscosity also, if it is large enough, it is very the smoothing solution. So it, it smear out. And if the viscosity is very small, we are very close to the final linear advection equation. So then again, we extended same idea to nonlinear Burger equation. There also we found the instability in the central difference. And we applied uh, the, the upwinding scheme. So upwinding gave us the stability. And now, we go to the same idea with the linear advection, so uh, advection diffusion equation. Now we try to do the Burger equation into the viscose form. So let us see what the viscosity does. Yeah. So, so I have already presented the Burger equation in the viscose form. So again, now Burger. in viscose form so this is del rho by del t plus rho del rho by del x is equal to epsilon del 2 rho by del x square since we do the our numerics so we take the we just cut the interval so let us say uh, minus 1, 2, 2. And here, epsilon is positive. If epsilon tends to 0, of this, viscous 
Burger's equation tends to the solution of original Burger's equation. So, initial condition again rho of 0x is equal to I apply so 1 if so I have the interval minus 1 less equal to x less equal to 0 1 minus x if 0 less equal to x less equal to 1 0 if to x less equal to 2. So here with the picture form, so I have here minus 1. So this is x, this is rho 0 of x. So this is uh, 1 here, this is 2 here. The solution, the initial condition looks like so from minus 1 to 0, I have constant value 1. And from 0 to 1, it is uh, decaying linearly, 1 minus x. And from 1 to 2, this is 0, OK? So this is our initial condition. So it is a linear, linear 1. So it is continuous at least. So. Now, let us do our the numerical approximation. So, since so we have the flux, so we have the convective, we have the flux. First, we approximate the derivative del rho by del t, del x is equal to what we have, a central difference, rho i plus 1 minus rho i minus 1 by to delta x, which we have derived yesterday, and del 2 rho by del x square is rho i plus 1 minus 2 rho of i plus rho i minus 1 by delta x square. And then now we do our explicit scheme for the time integration. So, explicit time integration is means rho i of n plus 1 minus rho i of n by delta t is equal to, I am not going to write all the discretized form because uh, what we have, uh, we just discretize your x i is equal to minus 1 plus delta i minus 1 delta x where delta x is equal to 3 by n, n is number of grids and rho of i is equal to rho of xi. We have already explained it uh, in our earlier lecture. Now this is the first part. Now this is the convective part is here rho i of n times del rho by del x is rho i plus 1 minus rho i minus 1 at time level n divided by 2 delta x is equal to the right hand side the epsilon here it is coming here again so this part rho i plus 1 minus 2 of rho i minus plus rho i minus 1 by delta x square. So it at the time level n, so all time step where so n is equal to 0, 1, 2, up to until the final time step we want to compute. 
And uh, so we know that there is a solution until t is equal to 1. If epsilon is changed to 0, we get the shock. Yeah? So we take the final time integration is uh, 1. Now that you, we can write it everything explicitly, so this means rho i n plus 1 is equal to rho i of n. This we put on right hand side is minus, so delta this goes up by so 2 delta x times this term rho i of n bracket rho i plus 1 n minus rho i of n plus now again the delta t goes up delta t so is epsilon times delta t by this denominator here delta x square bracket rho i n minus 2 rho i of n plus rho i minus 1 n. So this is our naive approximation What do we get? Yeah. And now we just plug that into our routine. So I will come later. How do we do that? So this is now the central difference. So now what we can see that if epsilon is very small, then so we are having exactly the central difference scheme which we have derived yesterday in the audio lecture. So it means that gives us the oscillation. So therefore, in order to dominate that oscillation, so we have to take take and balance. So we have to take a little bit larger epsilon. So if the epsilon is very large, so there is the CFL condition for delta T, which is the convective part. It is depending upon the maximum value of this. Now, suppose this is our velocity, looks like, so maximum value of rho. But if epsilon is very large, so then we have to adapt base on the epsilon. So we cannot take again the larger uh, time step. It should be somehow balanced with that CFL number as well as with this viscose coefficient. Now, if epsilon is very small, then what we may need? We may need to do some type of again the upwinding scheme. So let us derive this viscose form. If it is convective dominated, it means the rho is much larger than epsilon, then again we get instability. Yeah, so that is called the convective dominated flow. Then, so in that case, we do again the upwinding. So, upwinding means again we follow the sign of this rho. If rho is positive, we do the backward difference. If rho is negative, we do the forward difference. We come from the other side. So now what we have, we go to, this is a central difference scheme. Now we go to the upwinding type. So let me keep this equation as it is here. Let me write it bit up. Our del rho by del t plus rho del rho by del x is epsilon del 2 rho by del x square. This is our original equation. Now the upwinding. The upwinding happens only in the, the convective part. So if rho is positive, so in that case, del rho by del x is rho of i minus rho of i minus 1 divided by delta x. So in that case, our scheme is rho i n plus 1 minus rho i of n by delta t plus rho of i. This part I put it here. Rho i minus rho i minus 1 by delta x is equal to epsilon, that is same as that one. So rho i plus 1 minus 2 rho of i plus rho i plus 1 divided by 
delta x square. So these are all at time level n. So this is the old old value. So what we get from here is that rho of i n plus one is equal to rho of i n minus delta t. It is going up. I put it on the right hand side. Delta t y delta x times this term rho of i times rho of i n minus rho of i minus 1 n plus the right hand side is same as that one. So epsilon times delta t by delta x square rho of i n i plus 1 n minus 2 rho of i n plus rho of i minus 1 n. So it is just coming from this part. So this is in the case of rho is positive if the rho is going from left to right. So only the difference is here with the convective part. In the case if rho is negative, yeah, so what we will see? So instead of this, we will have the forward difference, so exactly the same our rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n minus delta t by delta x. Everything remains same, but this derivative is from other side. It's coming from right to left. Right from the i is rho i plus 1 minus rho of i. So this is the forward difference plus epsilon delta t by delta x square rho i plus 1 n minus 2 rho i of n plus rho i minus 1 of n. This is the case if rho is positive. Then we have a scheme number here 7.1. Scheme number here 2 is it is a positive 7.2. Scheme number 3 is 7.3. Yeah. So this now we will in the next uh, few minutes we will describe, I will show you the MATLAB code, how this epsilon plays a role and whether epsilon tends to zero we get uh, the exact solution towards the, of the original burger equation. We know the exact solution until time t is equal to 1. So we have computed that. And there we got shock. And then, then we do different epsilon, whether how much it is smear, the shock. And then uh, we'll let us see in the next uh, few minutes, uh, our numerical simulation in the MATLAB code. So let's have the MATLAB code. Let us see our numerical scheme. So first I try to uh, simulate the equation number 7.1. Here, so I have taken my interval minus 1 to 2. So like uh, our earlier lecture, so number of grid points, I take for example hundreds. So my delta x is so here x max minus x min means it is 3 by n or 3 by 100. So I run until final time t is equal to 1 because after that we don't have the solution if the epsilon is going to 0. But for larger epsilon we can have the diffusion, it goes further. Now I take the epsilon as 0 0.001. So CFL number I keep as it is, at the moment just don't change. So this is generation of the grid point. So x i is x minimum plus i minus 0 delta x. Then I do the initialization of my initial condition if x is less than 0. So I have 1. If x is between 0 and 1, it is 1 minus x i. And if it is larger than 1 to up to 2, it is 0. So I have the old and new value because n plus 1 is the new. 
and the n is old so i define this my new as old so but i have to i have to uh, that update from old to, uh, new old to new now i do the time integration i run until my time is less or equal to t final so which is one so i just run excluding the boundary point so i run because one and n are my boundary points so i run from two to n minus one because i will have some uh, some negative index which i do not have but then i just put because the flow doesn't reach the boundary so i can put the boundary condition there so my row of new i is equal to here row of old minus delta t by the 2 delta x times this row of old i then in the bracket why what you see row of old i plus 1 minus row old of i minus 1 that bracket form plus that epsilon so delta t by delta x square here at the end times the term is that dt times so rho old means rho n i plus 1 minus 2 rho of i plus rho n or rho old i minus 1. So this is the, the one and then once I compute that I update my time by delta t so my t goes from old time to delta t and then I just display how what is the time is going on the screen so at every time step I plot the solution so with respect to x so this is just uh, the frame once I have everything and I assign the new value as old value because I need from the left side new value and right side old value so i forget everything then in the next time step the new value will become the old time step so since we already know the exact solution here i have just in the final once we finish the simulation i want to compare how far is it from the exact solution now let us run the code so now what we see i get the oscillation yeah why because my epsilon is very small so here the epsilon what i have taken 0 0.001 let us take epsilon is little bit larger 0 0.005 what it will happen so still i have the oscillation yeah so only adding the viscous term may not help us much but now i go further so i just take maybe 0 0.01 so my oscillation is reduced so i have to give large value of viscosity so still there is little bit jump yeah little oscillation here so it is the exact solution is this but it's still 0 0.01 is not large enough now let us see that what will happen if i do the upwinding so upwinding i do the same setup i take like earlier very small epsilon and then so i keep the time steps as a cfl condition so now the only difference is that now I have the positive row and then I take this uh, uh, this backward difference. So only difference is this, con this term here. So row old is the same plus uh, I minus delta t by delta x now it is and then times row old of i times the bracket here row old i minus row old i minus 1 plus the rest is same as before so now just let us see what will happen here so in this case even if i follow the upwind scheme my small epsilon gives stable solution yeah but still what we have we have the little bit deviation from the exact solution 
that can be avoided for example if i take uh, like 400 point so if i take larger point fine resolution like we have seen yesterday so i get uh, close to the exact solution so exact solution can be plotted also at every time step yeah i have not plotted but i plotted on the final time step in principle we can because it is depending upon time and x so we can plot at every time step the numerical solution and exact solution that you can do by yourself yeah just put that final time the final plot in between of the time loop so now here what we see we see we are very close so now if i increase maybe n is equal to 1000 so i am almost close to the exact solution so now if with the same if i take larger epsilon so here like uh, earlier case in the central difference with the larger epsilon so it is it was of second order but uh, this one with the larger epsilon uh, this is the first order so then we are little bit far away but there even with the larger epsilon we had little oscillation but here we don't have now let us start uh, try with the end of the initial condition not with the linear so i just take minus 2 to 2 and i take the sine function what will happen so just apply the sine function here so what we get that uh, after certain time we get a shock so the shock propagate from so what is happening that in the beginning what we have we have a sine function here zero to here so left part we have negative velocity so the information coming from the right and the right part we have positive velocity information going to the right therefore we just check in our scheme if rho is positive we apply this scheme if rho is negative we apply this scheme so what is happening exactly here after 0 0.1 so we have the positive so we follow the backward difference the left from here we have the negative we follow the uh, the the forward difference so again let me play so this is uh, here we get a shock since i have the epsilon my epsilon is still 0 0.001 and then here what you see now this is a flux so this is the the term we call it as a flux here so if rho positive i have the backward difference here if rho negative i have forward difference here and then viscous term is that final one and then just my new rho is the old rho plus the convective term plus viscous term so there is uh, nothing now just another one is that uh, just uh, if i have just only one window function then we will get the propagation of shock to the to the right so with the linear advection question what you have seen when the a was when the rho is equal to a so the initial value was just shifting with the time but now once we put the burger equation so what is happening now we get the shock here yeah so this is the difference this is the effect of nonlinearity. any smooth solution for example for example we had seen the linear jump yeah so there was high density so density was decay and so uh, and then it was zero so then you say finally you got shock but here what we have we have very smooth function is still what is happening that after a certain time we get the discontinuity at this point here again so we start with a very smooth solution so finally we get the shock in earlier example we get a shock on the right as well as on the left because the wave is propagating on both sides so we stop uh, this uh, example now and then next uh, i will explain in the conservative form of uh, burger equation okay thank you